Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of In My Opinion. My name is John. My name is Alester. And today, today, we are back. We are back with another episode. But before we get into it, once again, if you haven't followed us on Telegram, why haven't you? Go and follow us on Telegram. Mm. Subscribe to us, whatever it is. Yes. Follow us on Instagram at Instagram Instagram well. iModa Pod. Correct. And Correct. also, we are streaming on Twitch right now. Yes. So we are trying to push out Twitch a lot more. Join us on Twitch. Today we are, we are streaming on a Friday. Yes. We normally stream on Thursdays. Join us next Thursday. Yep, chat says hello, but chat by chat, I mean uh, uh, Josh. Josh, so Josh says hi, YouTube. Once in a while, we'll try our best to speak to our Twitch audience, but yeah. we highly encourage you to join us so that you can uh, join us in some of our uh, more live situational discussions. And prior to our episodes, we also do a little bit of discussions to get each other's feeling on the topic at hand. And next Thursday, which is actually this Thursday when this releases on yes. YouTube, we are having Layer. Ah, we're having Leia on the show to discuss some topics and also play some games. So you guys can look up for that. Mm. So with that, we got all the plugs out of the way. Yes. We, wow, that's a very fast plug segment. Normally it's like two minutes long. But today, let's get into the topic. Uh. John, are you a football fan? I am not. I am. I used to be one, but I'm okay. no longer a football fan. But uh, I mean, recently, all I could see on my like For You page or TikTok mm. or like even on like Facebook or Google News is the recent like Euro 2020. Oh, is it? Euro like, for You finals. page is all the people dissing all the KTV people. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's like bef- before today, before today. Maybe we'll talk about the KTV people in the next episode or something. I don't know. You join our Telegram group, you can suggest to us. <laughs> but before today, before today, yeah. it was all about this, uh. like the Euro 2020 finals. Uh. And it's quite, I mean, Singaporeans are generally quite a uh, big football uh like we are quite a big football city or country ah, even though our football team no good um, unfortunate another topic for another day mm. but basically for the lowdown for the people who don't watch football I still think this is a very very important topic so don't mm. take away because I think it, it involves things like the, the intersection between business and ethics mm. and the inter- intersection between like uh, I guess like corporate corporate social responsibilities Correct. Well. but uh, basically the lowdown is that this England uh, England lost Spoiler alert, England lost. <laughs> they lost to Italy. And then they, basically they, a few of the England players missed a few cr- crucial penalties. Yes. Like three of them. I don't really remember their names, but I remember one is Rashford, one is Saka, I forgot the last one. They're all, they're all black, right? I think, yeah, they're all black. Yeah. And unfortunately, because of that, they also got a lot of racist attacks right. against them. And basically that sparked off a whole debate because one of them, Saka is 19 years old. Mm. 19 years old, we are in NS. Can you imagine being attacked by a lot of people, the whole country is against you because you just missed a crucial penalty in the final. Mm. I think it's a lot to have to bear mentally as, as well as a 19-year-old, like no less. So that whole thing is like quite bad. La. And that sparked the question I saw on TikTok. Someone posted on TikTok and I immediately sent it to John. Uh, he asked, should sports teams get banned for the toxic behavior of their fans? Mm, mm. And I was like, my first reaction to that was no. But then as I thought about it more, I can see why people are having this discussion. We, we actually what's your opinion before okay. I pull up the overthink poll okay the overthink in, I, I responded in the poll also Do you? so I yeah okay. I, I, I put a simple yes but I think the my answer is not so straightforward okay okay so I want to say yes that sports teams should be banned should be banned um, for the behaviour for the bad behaviour of their fans okay yes absolutely wow. okay tough but that should be like the final punishment as they work up towards mm. so repeat it's like you know in football you have a warning whistle then after that yellow, yellow card then after that uh, free kick then yellow card then like red, red card for all sorts of things yeah. right yeah so I that's think, like a progressive thing la. yes I think that should be like the rule that every country's football association implements on their football teams okay so like for example if something bad happens right they get they get a fine for example yeah and then warning happens right they don't get to ever host any games any live games they can, their players can never play home field mm. Okay. And the last one will be probably fine, cannot play home field, and banned for a season. Oof. Okay. But basically, okay, so we, as I said, we have an overthink poll yeah. in the Telegram channel, uh, channel. And 13% said yes. So you are part of that very, I very am. small minority. I am. And 64% including me said no. Mm-hmm. The other 23, I think, just wanted to see the results. So, in fact, Gabe Palazzi, thank you, Gabe Palazzi, yeah, yeah, yeah. for... Uh, he actually he 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 wrote this super long yeah. explanation of like what I he feels. I remember seeing it, and I think it's really really well written. So you guys can go ahead and check mm-hmm. it out. But we will be discussing something along these lines. So I think the first important question I have to ask is, what is the line between mm. toxic and not toxic? I mm-hmm. think that's a mm-hmm. very important mm-hmm. question to ask. Yeah. and that's the one that I think Gabriel said that like 
it was a bit iffy. Mm. We don't really truly know the line. So what's the line for you? I feel that the line for me, okay, maybe because I don't have a more nuanced answer. Right? Yeah. My line, the line for me is very simple. Mm. When it uh, harms, a uh, sort of like harm is uh, wished upon a person. Yeah. Right. Mm. That would be the line. So it can come in many forms. Yeah. It could be like asking the player to go and kill themselves. It could come from racially charged uh, with things. It could be trying to dox this person. Yeah. It could be trying to find where they live to try to sabotage their family. It could be vandalism and defacing of their property. Harm so will harm. come to their personal to their to that person mm. to this player because, like for example, um, when something happens on the pitch, yeah, right. We've learned in in I mean we're to we're athletes. Yeah. We've learned a lot of times to leave things on the pitch, right? Yes, yes. To of leave uh, any grievances or any any uh competitiveness on the pitch. When the final whistle blows, that's it. Exactly. We don't we don't bring it exactly out. right. But yeah. I do understand that like fans more more often than not there was no emphasis for them to behave that way. Mm. Okay. So all these all, we can't expect them to be the same level of sportsmanship as the players. Yeah. Right. Winners congratulating losers, losers congratulating players. No, we can't expect that. Yeah. But the minimum that we can expect is things that fulfill sort of like the human bill of rights. Okay. It, they should not fear for their safety. Yeah. They should not fear for their for damage to their property. Mm. Right? So yeah. the moment that happens, that crosses a line. Mm. And depending on the severity of that crossing, the punishment should be as harsh. Okay. And for example, for me personally, my conclusion is very simple. These, these hooligan fans... Yeah. Right, these wayward fans. Mm. They are fans, but they're not players. So there is no incentive or, or or rather punishment that hits them harder yeah. than seeing their team not be able to play. Mm. Actually, very, very interesting because just as you say that Denzel and Blazer 433 yeah. actually came out and said that like they don't think that banning the fans will actually banning the team will actually stop the fans. Why? They say that like in fact it might even backfire, especially when the fans are unsatisfied with the management and can act as a form of protest and can actually protest against it. Yeah. Or maybe even like uh you know, they might not even give a shit. They might be like in fact they might even like try to uh do even more drastic things to try to reverse the action. Mm. So I, it, it might backfire, which yeah. is kind of true. I feel that, that that will be that will be slightly different from uh the bad behavior that comes from bad from poor sportsmanship. Okay. Okay. So if you lose and you and you go violent or you riot or whatever, it's usually out of a, it's usually very passionate because the emotions are very high. Mm-hmm. Because your team at the moment lost and maybe you're a bit uh abbreviated, it's tough. It's tough to lose, yeah. You know, and you're really emotional and you'll be like, wow, you know, I support them so much, but they lose so they, so you're angry. They're understandable. Yeah. But if we implement rules, this happens, these rules are usually imp- these banning rules or whatever are usually implemented during times where emotions are not high. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that will mean that if we can bring up a proper case against all these things, right? Any riots or any up- unhappiness or any backfiring, right? Yeah. These are just teething pains. Okay. Okay. Teething pains are very different from passionate forms of bad behavior. When any change okay. comes out, there will surely be teething pains. It just yeah. come in different form. If they if they react this way, the mm. football organization or whatever will have no choice but to find another way to. So the, the law will have to f- work in such a way that, that like if there's another reaction, mm. right, it's a further ban. It's a further ban. Okay, okay. So you say whatever you say is like mainly for like the the like the smaller quote unquote smaller crimes, but it still causes harm. Yes. Okay. So things like vandalism and like honestly, the whole fiasco that happened in, in, in the UK yeah. was really bad because there were people who were getting hurt. It was yeah, it was quite bad, and, yeah. and I mean, you guys can. I'll link some articles down below, but you guys it's can definitely disgrace, go and see. It's you know? quite bad, uh. and, and if, if like you know, and 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 you know, because football being the big industry that it is, yeah, other countries will be like this country is trash, yeah. So there is a rep- uh, inherent national reputation thing at risk. But why? Okay, then I think most people would then ask like, why is the team and the players? Because if you mm. ban the team, yeah. the players will get financially affected as correct, well. Correct. Why are they taking the brunt of the fans' bad behavior mm. instead of the fans themselves? Because it's very understandable. Yeah. It, sports teams have been banning fans for a long, long time. Correct. For example, like recent in NBA, uh, Russell Westbrook, he actually got uh, caught racial slurs yeah, in yeah. a game. The fan got booted out. He can never go back to another game ever in his life. Mm. So that is normal. I think most yeah. people can stand for that. Correct. But why? 
is ban- why why would you say banning okay. for fan banning the team is the way to go? Okay, there, there's a very simple reason here because okay, firstly I do not know enough about the organization of football matches and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So based on why I understand the situation, right? Yeah. Why we should ban the teams instead of the players is because you no, can't fans, catch fans. every no, no sorry. Yeah. Ban the players instead of the fans. Yeah. You can't catch every fan. Okay. You can't catch every fan, but you need a policy that applies, uh, fan base wide. Right. Then how are the how is the team going to recover financially? That's the whole point. So what will happen is that these teams which have uh which are by the way, super, super rich. Okay? They are very rich, not gonna These yeah. teams that are super, super rich, yeah, will have to now dedicate some of dedicate some of their budget yeah. to managing or educating how their fans are supposed to behave. Think about mm. it. The football the football players definitely, I'm pretty sure they have campaigns where they come out to encourage better behavior. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Probably do because they recognize their fan base is a certain way. They probably come out and have that. But is that enough? The answer is no. Okay. So it reached a point whereby these things fall on deaf ears. Mm-hmm. Right? So it has to, in order to create an incentive for the football players to do something about their fans, Yeah. you must create a disincentive for them to do nothing. Okay. So you feel like it should land on the teams to educate their fans? Absolutely. Because the teams are the only one that can hit the fan base wide demographic. Okay. But okay, so another thing that we saw from the Twitch chat, I forgot yeah. who it was, but who who pointed it out. But uh a sports anchor, Gary Neville, who is also an ex player for yeah. Man United, he he said that it should fall on the government. Right. Which is another argument. Yeah. Like these are at the end of the day UK citizens, right? Yeah. Shouldn't the government be the one that's uh, in charge of educating these people so they don't say these sort of things. Yes. Especially because technically they are in charge of the education system, not Correct. the football teams. Correct. So like, why should it then be the team? Okay. So that's a good question, you see. Yeah. So government, right, can implement, what can a government do? We must understand here because I think, what the, what's his name again? Gary Neville. Gary Neville. Yeah. Uh, he has the, his uh, intentions are in the right place. Yeah. But you must understand that when you say this kind of passionate statements, right, what is possible here? Mm. What can governments do? Okay. Educate and create laws, right? Mm-hmm. So the education part, right, is a long-term solution. I'm pretty sure uh, right mm-hmm. now in the UK, the government is pushing some way to shift that mindset or yeah. to make people stop doing nonsense. Yes. Right? I, Either I think by shifting are, mindsets or creating disincentives or incentives. Yeah. Fair, right? But what we need now is also a deterrent policy. Mm. Deterrent okay. policy. So most of the time, deterrence policy is like when you play poker, right? <laughs> if someone with a lot of chips all in, that's a, high, a stronger deterrent than someone who has less chips than you all in. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I get what I mean. Okay. So if the government is all in on these football clubs mm-hmm. and be like, the next time this happened, you're not going to represent our country anymore or you're kicked out of the, cup, of the league. Yeah. All your years worth, all your money spent the whole year training, all your money spending investing on players, all the time you spend buying those players, mm. this season you are out regardless. So more budget will be spent on CSR on this kind of things. Yes. And also, okay. better management. Because the thing about it is that the whole football thing, right, it became problematic because the hooligans broke into the stadium first, into Wembley Stadium first. Mm. Okay. And then after that, because the hooligans got to do whatever they want, the hooligans continue to be racist. Mm. Okay. These, are, okay. this problem is twofold. So these two points of bad behavior can be corrected in a few ways, mm. right? educating people out of it before they reach that stage. Yes, of course. Yes. But that's the long game. Yes. What can we do now to punish people who still do the same? Right? Because in 10 years, this new education may not reap, your ROI may not even come out yet. Mm. Right? You need to have certain heavy-handed deterrent measures. You have, they have to crack down on the fence. It has to be a disincentive. Mm. And you can't crack down on the fence because there's so many. That's true. That's true. And clearly, they thought that not giving them tickets would have worked but it didn't it didn't yeah Even it just straight up didn't, didn't, didn't. yeah exactly okay. right mm, that's a good point so what, 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 what do you want put armed guards in front of the stadium I mean it might have to come to that that might happen that might work yeah. as, a, as a short term solution right Yeah. but that still doesn't stop the whole tirade of hate that mm-hmm. happens that is racially charged or, or, or for some even more passionate fans they might go and try to stalk these players and try to harm their homes that's true so what will happen in that, in that case right because what will happen is that loyal fans, I believe, okay, yeah. loyal fans who understand the plight of their players and not apathetic, passionate fans, right, mm-hmm. they will behave properly. Because they don't want their fans to... Because they don't want their players they to They want their players to suffer exactly. because of the bad behavior that exactly. they have. Okay, yeah. It's the passionate 
crazy people and how to stop these passionate crazy people, you must stop, you must nip it in the bud. Yes. Right? So in order to have it is they don't appear, right? So how yeah. do they don't appear? Don't have their players. I, I okay, I feel like I, I agree. Yeah. And in fact, I think you swayed me a lot more. Because yeah, yeah. my, my answer straight up was no. Uh-huh. Because I feel for the, the players. Yeah. The players, they have a very limited lifespan for a lack of a better word in, yeah. in football. Correct. After a certain age, if that's it, you're not yeah. earning money for a good See, that's how painful it has to be. Yeah. You earn a lot of money, but then, uh, the, skills, the, the, the skills are very are, are steeped against you. It's like pilots, man. That's pilots true. earn a shit ton of money, Yeah. but they can afford zero accidents. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, like the pilots can control whether or not they get accidents. They can't control how rowdy their passengers are. Oh, okay, okay. That's true, that's true. But yeah. Oh my goodness, that's actually a good analogy, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. I think the way you put it, right, especially the whole like, because they, are, they might get banned, their whole yeah. season might be lost, their financial gains might be lost. And mm-hmm. if anything, we know, if we know anything is that the money, like money runs the world. Yeah. So all these things, it will affect them, they will inspire change. Exactly. I think the problem is then when we implement this thing and Denzel actually pointed this out, mm. he feels like that this deter- deterrent policy might work in Asia mm. because I guess we are a lot more, as we said last week, collectivistic, a lot yeah. more think about the community kind of thing. Yeah. But it might backfire. Yeah. Is there is there a way to prevent the backfire? Is there a way to handle the backfire? There, there is something that actually potentially could work without having such a heavy-handed approach or so. And that is banning countries with certain bad behaviours from hosting games. Because if they're not mm. hosted there, the rowdy fans don't come out. Mm. So like, for example, then and, and this is at a government level. That's not necessarily even at a, at a football team level. It might be a football association level. Okay. So for example, you talk about the UK. Yeah. Right? Let's say something like this happened and then they are banned 10 years from hosting. Nothing gets heavier than that. Nothing. Right? People think about 10 years most of the time. By the time some of these hooligans are too old to go and be hooligans really. Mm. But that is how serious a ban can be. Okay. And with that kind of deterrent threat looming over them, you understand that shit, I cannot watch this anymore. You want to watch Fly Other Country? Fly Other Country? You want to be hooligan there? You go and, you go and face go that and law squat there. inside the yeah, Other yeah. Country jail. Okay, yeah, I get it. That is one way that they can do it. Okay, fair. Yeah. Okay, I think then the next line, a, a lot of other, because when you want to ban something, right? Yeah. We, there's a lot of other things to consider, mm. like the logistics around it. Mm. And also, the the question I realized that we haven't really gone into is the yeah. line. Because I'm a sportsman, you're a sportsman. Mm-hmm. Trash talk happens yeah. on the field. I trash talk a lot. I, I, I don't really trash talk. I love to trash talk. Right. But I don't mean any of it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm sure the fans love to trash talk as well. In NBA or basketball, yeah. trash talking is a whole part of a culture. Yeah. So the fans will trash talk and sometimes they are good trash talk and sometimes the trash talk crosses the line like racial slurs. Yeah. So to you, what is that line then? Okay. Because the, you mentioned a little bit about like the, yeah. cannot say kill yourself, that kind of thing. That, but that, that is a hurt. very, very common thing to say. It is. is right? Do you think that is like a straight up no? I feel that that's a straight up no. Okay. Because I feel that like, you see, I, uh, Asking people to, to kill themselves right, in a sports game, it might sound like just energetic, passionate pan- banter. Yeah. But you've never considered what the kind of impact that it might have on people. I do get that in sports games, right? A lot of times this kind of cheering and a lot of cheering uh, yeah. plays psychological tricks on players and it actually does yeah. affect their performance. It does affect their performance. Yeah. yeah. Trash talking does affect Correct. you. Yeah. But it can come in various ways. Mm-hmm. It cannot be at the expense of people's... Um, well-being in that sense. Okay. Right? I can't be like, while well, you're playing and then for the lack of a better word, while you're playing and I say, go fuck your mom, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> but I'm sh- that happens all the time. Yeah, and then you and then that player, if that's a player at the sidelines, he doesn't get to play it anymore. Mm. We've, we've, we've had captains do, in ultimate, in our, we, our sport, we play ultimate frisbee. Yeah. In ultimate frisbee, we have this thing called a spirit, Sp- spirit, spirit of the foul. Game. Yeah, spirit we got foul. a spirit yeah. foul. Yeah. Right? Spirit, of, spirit of the game basically is sportsmanship. Yeah. When something unsportsmanship I think something without unsportsmanly happens, yeah. captains can call for a spirit foul. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Which is something that does not exist in any other sport. Yes. So do you feel like I can I can see why, right? If yeah. let's say basketball and you implement the whole okay, you want to trash talk okay, but like there's a line. Uh-huh. People might be like, that's lame as fuck. Yeah, it is lame as fuck. But yeah. do you know what happens if you if you have that implement? Like people will be nicer? No. <laughs> It means, right, it gives you the ticket for punishment because you cannot say I never say. Mm. And I think this is the lack of, uh, the lack of, for the lack of a better term, the lack of spine when it comes to certain organizations. 
Mm. They want, they prioritize money over too many things. So they dare not to say this kind of thing. And they dare not outwardly, like Singapore, like, ah, the moment got cases, right? COVID just dropped to two. They don't care whether businesses disappear mm-hmm. because there's something bigger at stake here. So if football organizations or sport organizations truly value this over money, they will have done something about it. Mm-hmm. So because they value money first, you need yeah. to hit them where it hurts, which is money. Yes. So can you imagine if the government has a mandate that every single football's football uh, club or whatever club's income, 1% goes to uh, community education. Which is 1% sounds like very little, but 1% of what it's they're so earning is a lot money. of money. Yeah. yeah. If they do that, right, right, it might not hurt them, but they w- it will sort of like appear enough to them that they need to do something about it. Yes. And you'll ease up a l- the problem a little bit. Exactly. I'm, 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 I'm sure. Exactly. Just like from experience when I go no, to... Because, M- no, I yeah. give you, maybe I just expand a little bit more yeah, about what I was talking about. Can, can you imagine each football club, let's say you talk about the English Premier League. Yeah. Right. I don't know how many teams there are, but, but I know this, this, these clubs are incredibly yeah. wealthy. Yeah, they are, they are and rich Every as single hell. club right, is tasked to drop this 1% every single season. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly around Wembley Stadium, for example, right, wherever stadiums, outside of the stadiums, there are 20, uh, 20 to uh, three, 36. So every 10 degrees around the <laughs> stadium, right, yeah. there is a cinema grade screen that showcases the live scenes that are happening inside. Mm-hmm. We have uh, hired security patrolling every mm-hmm. 10 degrees of a circle because the stadium, let's just assume it's a circle. Yeah. And this, I tell you, we still you won't use up 1% from all the teams. That's true. Right? I don't think it will. Can you imagine if, let's say, we have in-stadium seats, they have alfresco seats and then they properly demarcate. <laughs> that won't even cost them 1%. That's true. That's true. But they won't even do that, you know? The football clubs won't even do that. So I know a lot of football fans will disagree with me that like the football teams should be fair, should be banned. But think about it this way. The football fa- football clubs, right, won't even spare that 1% to do that. And it takes mm. one idiot on the internet sitting down here to suggest all these things that would appease a large number of people. You don't need to catch and appease everyone. Mm. You just need to appease enough people so that the minority cannot do your stupidity. I also think that they might not be very incentivized to do so, partially also because Unfortunately, the passionate fans are the ones that, like, exactly, like chose the money in them. But like, can you imagine if let's say you talk everything. about the the screens, right? Yeah, yeah. People can can watch for free. Yeah, which is also another whole like they might not be very willing to do it because like first of all the, the you have to pay like in Singapore you have to pay using the Singtel cast to get your to get like football mm. and in I'm, I'm sure in UK you have to do something to get Sky Sports or something like yeah. that and you have to pay money to go in the stadium yeah. so if you just broadcast it for free n- n- business wise doesn't make any sense because people will just do that it's free exactly. so I can understand why they are a little bit disincentivized to do so in mm. fact maybe maybe other than I think I agree with everything other than maybe the putting on the on outside mm. I think there, there are other things that they can do increase security increase yeah. education, like get the fans to say like stop being assholes exactly. or something. Invest in some like media stuff. It can be a whole bunch of things, you know. Yeah. So like for example, with that 1%, let's say we, let's say the money that comes from streaming, not worth it to invest in screens, fine. Yeah. Right? Arm security, mm. facial recognition technology can catch people's faces. Yeah. And then if the football association is serious about it, they'll catch these people and send them to the law. Mm. Yeah. Which they can be charging in the law. To they be totally honest. can. Yeah. Every te- like, like I told you, right? You talk about the football stadiums being 360 degrees, right? You just need 36 to cover 10 degrees of angle each, and 10 degrees is damn little. That's true. Super easy to do. Yeah. 36 teams of arm guards. You want two layers, 72 teams. It's damn easy to hire, man. It is, and I don't damn think easy. it costs that much to them, exactly. to be honest. And then uh 36 uh facial recognition recording devices. Damn easy, man. Mm, I agree. Damn easy to do. The fact that secure high security events can cover the whole can cover every entrance point with metal detectors mm. means can do one. You can do one. I think have yeah. definitely can do. I think just as like a like a little experience like anecdote. Like I went to I went to watch a few NBA games. I'm an NBA fan. Yeah. And I think one thing that I noticed was that there were a lot of like signs around saying that like if you're rowdy, they will throw you out. And they have thrown people out. Mm. So like drinks and all that, right? If you drink too much and you're rowdy, or let's say, if you throw anything on the court, right? Straight away, you don't need to come back for the rest of the season, right? Mm. Or like maybe even forever. Yeah. They will just throw you on. And they made it very, very clear from the start. And I think NBA, in that sense, protect the players very well. Because, even though they allow the heckling, because I think that's, 
maybe a little bit part of the culture. Yeah. But they, when it comes to like physical abuse, when it comes to like racial slurs, everything, like, they will they will not hesitate to throw yep. you. Immediately, they will, they will kick you It has you to work like a premium nightclub. And there are, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and there are a lot of security. It does kind of feel like a premium nightclub. It actually. has to work like a premium nightclub. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the strategy that's taken. But why is it that we're talking about more KV handed measures? It's because that didn't work. That's true. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. That didn't work. Mm. People were offered tickets, tickets were filled, but people stormed. Still stormed it. The... So there has yeah. to be something else. You can't do the same thing expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity. Yeah, I agree. And and we all know, you know, the era of stern warnings by politicians has gone and passed. People don't no care. No one cares. As, yeah, no one cares about anymore. About stern... Warnings. Yeah, stern <laughs> warnings and stern... Uh, uh, what, what I can't... The uh, harsh words. Yeah, uh, we... Like, we the, like Boris Johnson. Yeah. Boris Johnson went on... Yeah, he went on live to... Shame on you. I think it's... A I hate <laughs> to break it to you, but if that worked, we might have prevented World War II. But I think... I think it's a good... I mean, I think it's important for him to say it. But in terms of like, whether or not it's effective... Exactly. Probably not. Right? Like, probably didn't deter anyone. Exactly. Yeah. So if there was a way that we could track every individual fan, then we can serve justice. Yeah. Right? I, but that is not feasible or possible. It's very difficult. It's not. So where can we hit where it hurts? Ban the team. Ban the team. Or, like we mentioned earlier... 10 years or a long enough time, they cannot host games anymore. No more home games. Which is what du- random Durian actually suggested. He said Ben, uh, he thinks that like banning like home teams might be easier. Yeah. And ho- banning them from hosting games, especially exactly. for like in leagues like NBA or like, exactly. or, like the EPL and everything. Then a lot of money is lost. Football Association need to pay for the maintenance of the, of the pitch. stadium yeah. or the pitch, you know, and they will lose potential ticket sales. That will create an incentive for them to do something about it. And the ban cannot be a token ban. It cannot be like, okay, the next game you cannot play. That's nonsense. <laughs> we have 30 over teams. You know, their training also pay a lot of money yeah. to use the facilities. Ban them for years. Oof. Ban okay, them for was, two seasons. I don't think that like it has to progressively go up to there. La. Yeah, but you know, the thing about it is that ben, how, if the ban was two seasons, they are ball string. They are ball string. Immediately. String, right? I hear already, I want, like, I'll be like, geez. This team no will actually fade to oblivion. It will, eh? It, you're, you are losing so much revenue. And that is how serious it has to be. Okay. If the government was serious about it, not only will this team is effectively disappear, right, other teams might buy these players to try to get them to play. I'm wondering if we are saying this easily because we are personally not very strong That's the thing. F- sports fans. Correct. But the thing about it is that I feel in order for this kind of decisions to be made, it must be made by a non sport fan. Mm, interesting. Mm. I think that... I do think that it's important for the sports fans to... To agree to it, actually. Is it? I also think that part of sports is the culture. Mm-hmm. Part of the sports is the environment and that's what people like. Yeah. People like the fact that uh, that you can be from all walks of life yeah. and people will come together to support one team yeah. and you and people will just be bonded over the fact like, for example, I like Liverpool. Everyone that likes Liverpool I automatically feel a little bit closer to them. Correct, correct. So I think that, right, might potentially, the only, the only thing that I am against for this but I don't think it's enough to like, I guess warrant me saying no to it anymore. Yeah. It's the fact that I think the culture will be a bit spoiled. But the culture, right, is yeah, I feel that all the things that you mentioned are the very positive things that come out from sports culture. Yeah. These are these can happen mm. and will not be a problem if the team wins. Yes. And these things are not are, are can also happen, we know for a fact, uh, without the negative things happening as well. So, yeah. Like I give you an example. It's not mutually exclusive. Besides, we talk. Don't talk about. Let's not talk about the UK. Let's focus on other countries with yeah. big sports cultures. Yeah. US, for example. Yeah. Another country that has amazing sports culture, and sports is such a big industry that their kids strive to be sports players. Yeah. Japan. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Japanese players in all kinds of sports. You know what they do after they finish? They pick up their trash, and okay. they pick up the extra trash, and they never go rowdy, and they leave quietly. Hmm. Now, I do understand that there's a cultural difference there. Yes. But there is also something that can be learned from it. Mm. You don't need the whole country to behave like Japan. No, Japan is Japan, right? Japan is, yeah. But you can have every single one of your fans behave like their fans, right? That's true, that's true. Okay. And how did that happen? Right, It happened because the culture at home was strong. Fine. Other countries don't have that kind of culture. When we need to find a way to disincentivize the bad behavior and incentivize behaving like Japan. That's true. I'll give you an example. 
Japanese pick up their trash? Impressive. You know? What if we told every sports fan that whenever they return their trash, we give them a dollar for each piece of trash? Which I think they already do, actually. Not, not everywhere. Not everyone. Not everywhere. And yeah, not everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. So if people are willing to do that, that would create incentive. That is called by creating incentive. Yeah. But my methods are always to create a disincentive. Disincentive for the bigger or corporations so that they can create incentives for the so this, Yeah, and disincentive yeah. for everyone in general. Okay. Yeah. Because it, there are two ways you can always teach people. Ma. You incentivize yeah. good, good behavior or disincentivize bad behavior. Right now, mm. incentivizing good behavior, which is, I think, the prevailing strategy for a lot of English football games, hasn't been working. Not, not, not great lah. Yeah. I think England and like especially with their football is they are a very passionate crowd and yeah. sometimes the passion goes overboard la. That I feel that that is true yeah and if we accept that that is true mm. and do nothing about it then yeah. inherently we're not being accountable and we're not protecting the players as exactly. well exactly so yeah. when you talk about countries and this is why I don't believe in the we condemn these people are you say all this and you know of their existence but you actually do nothing that's true that's true. Okay. Fair enough. I, I, okay. I honestly, honestly, I went into this conversation thinking my answer is no. Yeah. I think if let's say you can, if everyone can work out the feasibility side of things, which yeah. we haven't talked about because we are not governments and, yeah, we are yeah, not, yeah. and we're not corporate overlords or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but if that is okay, right? I do think that we should strongly consider it. Yeah. If not, right? Governments control what? Governments control the land and the institutions. Yeah. Uh, football association or the stadiums are closed for two seasons. So like that you want to host, fly your players elsewhere. Lose money. How? They Do it. something <laughs> about it. Yeah, you solve it. Uh. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I can get behind that. I think, I, I understand, yeah, as I said, my only worry is the culture. Uh. And I do, I do agree that most of it is not mutually exclusive. Let's mm. say there are a lot of like very, very passionate fans who despite losing, they will still be very graceful in losses and everything. I feel that if you lose and you're upset and you want to go and scream and shout or whatever, yeah, yeah, go home and grab your soft toy and do it. That's fine. <laughs> right? The problem is when they do it in the public because they feel like they must express their... And it causes harm to other people. Exactly. So. Yeah. Okay, that's true. And I mean, uh, not all fans are bad. We're not saying that all fans are bad. In fact, I know like, for example, Leeds United have a wonderful fan base. They weren't even in the EPL for a long time. They were in League 2. I forgot what's the name of it. But mm. now... Yeah, I think now they're in EPL. Yeah. Or a few years ago they're in yeah. EPL. And the fan base has been like very, very nice at least for as far yeah, as well. Exactly. And yeah. what will happen is I feel that with this kind of implementations, right? Yeah. The passionate fan the fresh passionate fans mm. who are passionate but also behave well will very ironically be uplifted because the passionate angry fans will probably be will probably be pissed off and not willing to support these teams anymore. That's true. So you kind of weed out lah. Yeah. The mm. good people will surely stay because they're already, bu- they already good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They understand. Oh, shit. Oh, shit's fucked. Yeah. Also not my fault. <laughs> they will become angry. But then after that, there's nothing they can do. Mm. And these are the good people that we want to keep. They understand the point of nothing we can do. And they are still passionate enough to keep the spirit, passionate enough to keep the enthusiasm that makes exactly. what's, what makes sports special. Like. Exactly. Do you realize that a lot of times when when teams that are that disappear for a long or bands that disappear for a long time mm. come back with a comeback gig, they're still rece- they're still widely received, still sell out stadiums. True. True. Yeah. And these uh, are the people who are passionate for them. Yeah, I think one last point before we go into our final like goodbyes and goodbyes. Yeah final points and everything. Denzel yeah. did say that like from a technical standpoint, the reception, wait, the rec- the face recognition with cameras around a stadium is highly feasible just that the cost might be too high for the mid or lower tier clubs. Mm. I think that's something we didn't really consider as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe like, uh, it might affect like the, the less rich clubs. Then it has to be a football association responsibility. Mm. See, all these clubs, right, are clearly under a certain organization. Yeah. Right? I don't know who organizes everything. There's UEFA, there's FIFA, there's all sorts of things. Yeah. Right, and these uh, associations make a lot of money. Yeah, and they make a lot of money from the football clubs who make a lot of money from the fans. It's yeah. like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, I everything's mean, like a, that. Yeah, right? I guess so. Yeah. So we just need to shift earnings from everywhere a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I think it's quite important that we don't affect them also because like the small teams are still contributing to the culture. As I said, exactly. So, and if it's a percentage thing. It doesn't oh, matter how yeah, big or small be a you percent- are. Yeah, that's my, yeah, actually the percentage thing will work quite exactly. well. It's, it's not like a, a fixed maintenance number. fee, right? Yeah. 
it's not a fixed number, la, so exactly. that, that's a good thing. So if it's pulled together and then the football association is the one that makes this happen with the watchful eye of the government, yeah. the government may be like, hey, how come this stadium you still haven't put? Yeah. Or like the moment they need, for example, riot, facial recognition, not switched on. Yeah, audio. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Audio. Exactly. That's true. Okay, with that, any final thoughts, John? No, I think this is actually quite a good topic because it is. like managing human behavior is something that uh, I feel the world can definitely improve on. Yes. Whether it be sports or anything, anything yes. to be, for that matter. Because look, yeah. at, look at us, as we're talking about this right now, uh, Singapore faces its KTV problem. Yeah, KTV, there COVID are a lot of, cluster. yeah, we are human and we falter. Yeah, we do so the shit. fact that we don't have a solution for, for managing people's behavior is, I don't know, it's, I feel it's, it's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so this is something that wor- that is definitely worth investigation and worth uh, exploring, especially for policymakers. Mm. Because if they can control population, uh, not control population, control behavior, right, in certain select scenarios, yeah. they can extrapolate them all the way up to pandemic. Yeah, I think the bad behavior uh, is, I think we haven't quite figured it out. I mean, yeah. it depends on who you ask. So there are, I mean, the whole freedom of choice that exactly. I said is to allow, you have to allow people to do bad shit for them to do good things. For them, I guess that's the whole freedom of choice parad- paradox, I guess. Paradox. Like, you have to allow them to be able to do bad things for them to, for you to allow them to go- do good things. Exactly. And, so, and, and it's and a bit like, tough. La. Yeah, you know, there's so many ways that we this, we can explore these kind of topics where we talk about incentive versus a disincentive. Yeah. Like how do you disincentivize boomers from rushing the NTUCs whenever PM Lee is about to come out and talk? <laughs> each, each plus take $10. La. <laughs> Fair enough. No boomers will go. Yeah, and I think like this whole episode we've been talking a lot about sports, but like I think it is very applicable to a lot of other things as well. Mm, For example, mm. like I'm a chess person. Yeah. There have been quite a few like un like rowdy behavior in the chess scene, even it sounds ridiculous. Nerds cannot be rowdy in your opinion. But they are. There are a lot of rowdy nerds. So there are a lot of people who are like throwing like racial slurs at chess players. At especially streamers and all that. Why? There was one incident with this guy. He basically played online with this Indonesian player and he accused him of cheating. And in fact, chess.com that did find him to be cheating. And then, but then the Indonesian person said that he did not cheat. And basically, a lot of Indonesians went to his channel and just started dis- like berating him. He got a lot, he got like death threats kind. As in, who was getting death threats? The Indonesian player? No, the American uh, player. Right. Who accused him of cheating. Right. Got like death threats and his family got death threats and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there has, I think that applies to this as well. So, it's a bit hard. It's very, I mean, no matter where you go, there will be rowdy behavior. Especially yeah. when paired with passionate fans. So, mm. I think maybe we can explore how that will, can help other industries or other sports or other places as well. Instead of having them, instead of having the Euro 2020 final repeat. Yeah. And then we think of a solution. Exactly. Yeah. You see, there's no solution. And like I think we when we talk about toxic people everywhere, they exist everywhere. They Even do. video games and chess games and all that kind of thing. And everywhere. there's no real way to control. Difficult. Uh. Right? It, especially for things that have low barrier of entry. Yeah. So how? You know, we haven't found a proper solution to that. People mm. have been, I mean, it's evolving. Maybe yeah. a little bit too slow sometimes. And in order to incentivize growth. <laughs> Just... You either have a deterrent. Yeah. Or incentive. La. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm quite interested to see what you guys have, like thoughts you guys have with regards yeah. to this topic. I'm sure most of you are very passionate soccer, I was about to say soccer, football fans. Uh, I'd like so, to know why you guys... football, yeah? Yeah, but like, they are sensitive about this whole thing. Right. I, I don't know. You're <laughs> sensitive about soccer and football. But yes, I I would like to hear what you guys have said. Exactly. Say. Go in the comments down below or if you prefer, Telegram chat, we will res- we'll respond and with that yes thank you guys so much for watching today's episode correct next week or next or this Thursday when this releases <laughs> on YouTube join us on Twitch we'll yeah join us on Twitch follow us on Instagram follow us on Telegram and then we'll always try our best to communicate with y'all especially our Twitch people who are tuning yes. in right now you're, you're the bomb there's Thanks, still man. more to come but like you know for our YouTube people yeah for the YouTube folks this is the end but we have like another one or two hours left to go with yeah. Twitch games so the end, join end us not come. the end is not not the yet it's not the Sure, sure, the best is yet to come. Yes, yes, I. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Stay safe and see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.